Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this fantastic Friday. It's fantastic because it is the Friday before Sunday. Well, there's a Saturday in between, but I'm so excited about Sunday. Hope you'll come and join us. 845 Bible Study, 10 a.m. Worship, 5 o'clock. We're having a concert by the Broken Pilgrims, amazing group of men who are going to sing for us, and I hope you'll come and join us for that. But right now, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we're going to pick up in verse 8. Now, remember, Paul is comparing Israel to us. He's telling us not to follow Israel's example, but that Israel was our example for what not to do, like when they rebelled in the wilderness and didn't make it in, even though God took care of them, gave them everything they needed, and they still rejected his leadership, still didn't follow him. Then they started worshiping idols. They got caught up in sexual immorality. He says in verse 8, and in one day 23,000 fell. Verse 9, he said, don't let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted God. And they were destroyed by serpents. You remember when Moses had to form the brass, the bronze uh, serpent so that they could look at and be healed. And then look at what he says in verse 10. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now I want you to think about that for just a minute because one of our biggest problems in most of our churches is people love to complain. Now look, I don't mind criticism. If it's constructive criticism, come and talk to me. I would love to talk to you about anything that concerns you. If I'm doing something that you don't like, then you come and talk to me. And if it's if it's scriptural, I'll listen to you. No, no question asked. If, if there's a program that, that something's not going right, come and talk to me. But let's not complain to everybody and just uh, voice our opinion so that we can cause disunity and, 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 and the discord. Because look at what he says. In, in, in the wilderness, these people complained and they were destroyed by the destroyer. Now, I'm not exactly sure what he's talking about here other than the fact that God just opened up the, the, the earth and swallowed some of them up because of their uh, complaints and grumbling against Moses. And I really think that one of the things that we face in our churches today, the reason that so many churches are struggling is because so many people are not following biblical principles. If you've got a problem with somebody, even the pastor, go to him personally one-on-one -on -one and work it out. And if you can't work it out there, take somebody with you. And if that doesn't work, then you go to the church. But don't skip those steps. Follow the principles and God will bless that because God will often bring healing to relationships by following those principles. Otherwise, we are doing harm to the body of Christ and God will send judgment. I've seen it. I know it happens. He disciplines first, but when discipline is ignored, he judges. And look at verse 11. Paul tells us the truth here. He says, now all these things happen to them as examples for us. And they were written for our admonition upon whom the end, ends of the ages have come. Now, I want you to hear me. Paul truly believed that the last days were upon him. He believed that Jesus would return in his lifetime. All of the signs that Jesus talked about, Matthew chapter 24, had been somewhat fulfilled, everything. And now Paul said, it's coming, it's coming soon, and we need to start living like that. Well, let me tell you something. 2,000 years has passed. Jesus did not return in Paul's lifetime. He has not returned at this point. But the promise is still true. He is coming again. He's coming in power and in glory. And judgment will come when he descends upon the earth. And I want you to understand, we are living in the ends of the ages. They truly have come. Now, he might decide not to come for another hundred years. But we're to live as if he's coming today. I want you to think about that. Because we're not guaranteed another second. We're not guaranteed another breath, another heartbeat. At any moment, God could say, time's up. Live your life as if the next heartbeat is going to be your last. Think about that today. Hope to see you on Sunday. Be blessed.